What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another Brood War Ladder cast. This time with Rich spawning over here in the top left hand corner versus Sharp. Change these colors around, shall we? There we go, looking much better. Red Protoss versus Blue Terran. And I just wanted to cast this single single game. Um because I am a big fan of Sharp and I cannot wait to see him play in the SSL. Really looking forward to it. And I imagine and I would predict that Sharp should be out of Rich's league. Rich is a strong ladder Protoss player. He's an ACS contender, but I just I don't think he can match what Sharp brings to the table. This guy is insanely good and has been developing his game in leaps and bounds as of late. Very curious to see what he will pull out cross map versus Rich. Rich not going to opt for the Nexus first. So he won't get to see Sharp's early pressure. Both these guys are on barcodes. Likely they don't know who each other are at this point. So just a casual ladder opening from both players. We've got barracks on the high ground. No gas though. So a gas is fast expand coming from Sharp. And it appears to be just a, a goon expand from Rich. He's not going to find his opponent. In fact, neither of them will for quite some time. Sharp is going to scout bottom left, then top right, then top left. So the end scout will not pay off for him. At least he gets to see the center. That there's no gateways over there is a good thing to find out early on. No Marine started just yet. Wanted to get the gas before Marine. He started his CC. Second supply depot. Oh no, he does have a Marine. Excuse me. So he got the Marine. CC, second supply depot, then gas. Paused on the Marine production for quite a while. And looks like an end scout from Rich as well. How funny is that? He saw the direction of the SCV and turned his probe uh, down towards this bottom left. So... The end scout on either side, both of them not being effective. Both of them going to scout each other at the last possible moment. Ah, uh, this Dragoon not able to body block. Maybe he can do it with the probe. If he can just body block this for a moment. Oh, one missed shot. There it is. He gets the kill. Dragoon successfully picks that off. And I believe he just lost the probe to the bunker. So that's unfortunate. Probe goes down. And, you know, he realizes now that he's a little bit behind. He may have to do something kind of drastic. And there it is. Citadel of Adun. DT play. Going to be the choice for Rich. He will be maybe just walking DTs across the map, trying to get him in. Will he go for a drop, though? I feel like this is for a robo. There it is. Robo on the way. So DT drop to be the play will sharp be prepared for this he has an engineering bay second supply depot or another supp supply depot no academy just yet the placements of the turrets the placement on the turrets is going to be super super important he didn't scout the main he doesn't know what's actually what's going on. He saw the Nexus though, so it can't be the fastest possible DT, but this is still a pretty quick DT. Already has the turret up. So even getting that turret up before he really needed to. We should sh see a shuttle in production. There it is. Two DTs. This is the gambit of this game. Rich, can he get in? and deal the damage or will sharp block this so far i do not see any turrets in the main there's the first one. First turret in the main very important moment where that turret's being placed notice it's not in this position this is more of a 
anti-reaver turret. If you were a truly anti-reaver, you'd probably place a turret here and another turret there and then one there. And then you've got one here. It's quite a few turrets though to set up a full a wall around the outside of your base. These ones still kind of anti-DT. Put a tank there. Even if they drop a reaver at the edge of the vision of the turret or the range of the turret, you're still going to be able uh, to fire at it with your tanks. We do not have siege mode yet. There it is. It just started. Here comes the shuttle. Meanwhile, behind this, drop in a nexus. This makes a lot of sense for Rich. Unlikely that we're going to have a consistent form of anti-air. Oh my goodness, this might be the worst thing ever. One DT going to slip into the back line. One TD di DT dies. This one could get a lot of damage. It's not the worst thing ever, in fact. I thought flying straight into that turret and at, as the Goliaths were popping out was going to be a lot worse. But since this DT managed to slip past... We could get a lot of damage already. A couple of kills, three total. Could go after the armory. The armory would be a massive kill. Can prevent this plus one from ever finishing. Do we have an academy? Yes, the academy is almost done. Will he target an SCV? If he pulls an SCV right there and targets it, he could get a kill. Gonna try and repair a little bit. Go for the target. Nope. Target his own SCV. Nope, nope. Not gonna target. Come on. Okay, he's keeping it alive for now. Comsat's on the way. Can he keep it alive long enough? Oh, it's so close, guys. I think he just barely is gonna keep this alive. He even unseages uh, with the tanks to make sure he doesn't accidentally splash down the armory uh, with the tank fire. And he does manage to maintain that armory. That was not very much damage, guys. That was a very minimal amount of damage for that DT drop. I think Rich is in serious trouble. 45 SCVs, plenty on two bases to initiate this four factory push. And I start to come out. He does not have a, a second scan, it seems. There's the scan. Finally, he will be able to target this down, but this is a lot of tank kills. Wow. All these tanks are gonna go down. Jeez, an excellent fight from the high ground. Excellent engagement overall for Rich. That went insanely bad. Felt like Sharp was a little bit too cavalier with this push out. And he's going to pull the Marines out of the bunker now. Usually you want to bring those with the original army. They're not going to be of much use now. They're really meant to body block for the tanks. Make sure they don't take as much damage, but... Oh boy, just sharp vultures doing what sharps vultures do best, killing off a ton of probes in the natural, getting in, even though there's a reaver in this wall, the ultimate anti-vulture uh, unit, but it hardly is able to stop this. And now more vultures slipping in, they get right on top of these probes, start to kill off a huge clutch more of these units and oh man he's gonna catch the probes on the other side as well this is getting very dire for rich he's losing so much he's gonna pull back these dragoons trying to keep them alive while he's losing more and more and more probes just about every probe at this base will end up going down at least he keeps the dragoons alive but it's a small consolation for all the damage that was just done to him five kills on this final vulture as it goes down that was brutal damage. But I expect nothing less from a player. The caliber of Sharp, it's not going to completely make up for all the tanks that were lost, but it's definitely a reasonable consolation prize. Well, this might, it, it, it might actually make up for it now. He's gonna get a few more probes in the natural. A little bit of mistargeting there, but it's fine. Killing off just a few more probes on top of what's already been done to Sharp is, or to Rich, is really impactful for this game. 45 probes remain, 58 SCVs, and a four supply advantage for Sharp. 
and start to utilize these reavers to maybe slow down the third base there's not a very good defensive position for that oh boy he's gonna lose this shuttle potentially with two reavers inside of it shuttle goes down but the reavers do survive they will be able to slowly pull themselves with their mouth claws back to the dragoons seriously it's like a it's a claw inside of their mouth I'm going to inch themselves all the way back across the map. Slugging it out, as we like to say. This shuttle does come out to pick those two Reavers up, but the Wraith is still sharking about. And may be useful for an upcoming fight. If he wants to try and bring those Reavers to bear once again, it looks like... I see a gate, or I see air weapons on the way. Are we going to switch into carrier? And scarab damage. Well, that's pretty insane. This is a snow build, if I've ever seen one. He's going to rely purely on reavers with damage upgrades to hold on until he can get uh, air weapons and eventually transition into carrier. Sitting on three bases for now. Going to throw down a fourth nexus in a moment but I think that sharp will be ready to push out long before this is done wait wait psionic storm and leg enhancements while getting plus one I wonder if this is a bait I wonder if he's just trying to fake out sharp and make him think that he's going for a carrier transition by having that cybernetics core spin and then not actually get carry no there it is stargates are on the way it's not an elaborate bait scanning in the natural seeing what's popping out sharp i don't think he's scouted the stargates but every time we hear a scan i'm gonna go ahead and check that mini map see if we can spot when he figures out about this eventual carrier transition it feels like he he may already know oh here we go again another scan not sure where that one was reavers in the mid map can be very good if you can take a position over this high ground can be very strong to just keep reavers up there and hold back the terran Boosting up in supply 168. Here's another scan. Again, the natural. Checking to see what's coming out. Fleet beacon is on the way. Plus one is just about done. Here's a couple more scans. He does scan the main base, as you can see. Spotting out this carrier transition is a big moment. His immediate reaction. Three Goliaths on the way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight factories. I think it's time to go to ten. Ten factories and a massive push would be a good way to end this game for Sharp, but will it be in time? And how are the trades going to be before that happens? I think we've got, yes, a whole bunch of Templar in this shuttle. This could go extremely well for Rich. If he takes this engage properly, if Sharp messes up, he may just be dead because these reavers have their damage upgrades and we've got storms so that is an insane amount of splash if the tanks are clumped and this engagement goes poorly he's easily gonna buy enough time for six carriers to be made dropping out a storm already passing it on some of these vultures and mines could look to pick that up again but not going to bother it would be a little bit uh, confusing if you've got one Templar in your shuttle that doesn't have energy. As you're dropping them out, you're trying to cast Storm and one of them doesn't have energy. It could be a little bit annoying. And so here comes the engagement. Dropping out a Templar. He does get the Storm off. Nice Storm there. Secondary Storm. Lands on some of these tanks. Pretty good so far. Backing up is the right choice after the zealots have disappeared but what is left over 174 supply 
of Mac is bearing down towards this next base. He's gonna try and cast the storm. He can't. The storm not able to be cast. The two Reavers were not part of that early fight, but they're here to sort of delay as this tank push comes forward. Three cannons on high ground is very nice. Very smart play from Rich. That's super annoying, and all he needs to do is buy time. He has three carriers out. He's about to get three more. These Reavers are going to do so much work. Oh, boy. Killing off a ton of these Goliaths. Once again, going to be dropped, but they immediately get picked off. That was not the, the fight that Rich was looking for. Pooling his resources, pooling this army. He could try to snipe tanks at the back of this force. Or he could just back up and wait for these carriers to be on the field. He's got a thousand minerals in the bank. And he's about to pop out six carries. He's also dropping with that shuttle. He managed to pick up some probes. So he can get some mining going over in top right. Meanwhile, he's going to take this fight over at 6 o'clock. Finishing off quite a few of those tanks. Has Storm, or he almost has Storm. He's just waiting one more second for this one. Casting a Storm on a bunch of Templar right now would be very good. He gets his own Observer in the process, but look at how damaged all of these Goliaths are. And you rarely ever see a Terran player pull SCVs to repair Goliaths, so... One more storm and a couple carrier hits could take out a ton of these Goliaths. And really, the Giga army is here. Six carriers plus storm. It's an insanely difficult, difficult comp composition to counter. You've got Goliaths, you've got tanks, but the carriers counter the tanks and the storms counter the Goliaths very, very well. So we'll see if he's even able to do any damage with this push some of the interceptors are getting picked off the zealots are going to come out some storms get to get to be thrown down now in fact throwing down a lot of storm on a ton of these units some good targeting coming down on oh my god the storm wow so many storms thrown out on these goliaths has he done enough damage to maybe push this back it's looking like a no 1,300 minerals in the bank. He should be able to put out uh, enough units to perhaps push this down. I feel like pure zealot would be fine, but he's popping eight goons, which doesn't feel like the best decision to me, but we'll see. If he just targets down tanks during this fight, then the goons can run, run the show and pick off all of the Goliaths, but I guess targeting down the last three Goliaths is fine. Once the Goliaths are gone, now the tanks can be targeted. Getting the moving shot going. He will be able to pick that off. Oh, Vultures over at center left. That's kind of the last mining for our Protoss. He's about to lose his carrier as well. That carrier just getting targeted down. Pretty painful. But 1,700 minerals. Oh, this Wraith with six kills as well is pretty annoying. Didn't even notice that Wraith over in top right hand corner. That's done so much damage. That's slowed down the economies a ton. And there is this base at six o'clock. How many carries do we have? Just six still. Hasn't produced any more. Trying to get some ground units out. He's got seven Templar in production. Seven temps in the production tab right now. Another carrier goes down. Trying to take a fight with these tanks. Middle of the map has been taken. That's pretty crazy. Sharp, absolutely wild for taking that base. But I guess it's a reasonable idea. Six o'clock is probably going to die. That's a lot of Goliaths coming out. Even supply, but it's not that big of a deal when it comes to carriers. Is he going to make any more? Feels like he's just sticking with gateways for now. Sending a probe to bottom left. Seems like that might get picked off. Yeah, he should be able to stop that. No, he doesn't see it. So the probe will get down to bottom left. That could be a big problem. Two Goliaths and a tank heading over to top right. But we've got a cannon, a Dragoon, and 
a dark templar plus a high templar as well uh, that could be very helpful in stopping this carriers are making their way over towards the natural this is getting to be a crazy game now things are getting a bit hectic at this point looks like he will get the cannon at least tanks gonna go down as will this goliath so the harassment has ceased a lot of storms coming through the middle of the map oh my gosh if we had emp that would be so impactful throwing down a ton of storm on a lot of these goliaths not many of them are actually going to die but a lot of damage was done so these goliaths can get picked off pretty quick there's only two bases mining for now for terran but the supply has dropped dramatically on the side of rich goons are fighting straight up against goliaths which is always great for the protoss player Tons of interceptors are being lost though. And the goon army will finally fall. Blue blood melting into the ground as the carriers escape. Another carrier will pop out and this army is heading across the map. Not a huge army. That is for sure. Only three tanks in this entire army. And a lot of low HP uh, goliaths in this force. So maybe with a couple of good storms, we can clear this. Enough at least for the carriers to come in and, and do the cleanup job. This base is just about to run out. We only have middle to rely on. Two dropships heading up to top right. What do we have to deal with that. Couple of DTs, not much else. Maybe a storm or two. Carriers, six of them. Thinking about clearing these tanks. That's three free tanks over here. We could easily pick off. Here comes that drop. We'll start to try and kill this cannon. Cannon will go down very quickly. Shuttle over here, but it doesn't have anything in it. The DT is going to get scanned and killed. The three free tanks will be picked up for free. But the base in top right is massive. I think he lost that probe down in bottom left. Must have been to uh, the SCV that's down there, perhaps. That last tank is going to fall. Just pure Dragoon remaining. There's one Templar in this army who could throw down a storm at a critical moment. Let's see if he gets one. He gets a really good storm in this fight. It's all of the Goliaths. It could change the game. Falling back now. Oh, he loses that before casting even a single storm. That is frustrating. Rich, just about out of this one. There are way too many Goliaths now. And without the storm, I doubt he can push his way through. However, another round of goons makes his way forward. And straight up goon versus Goliath is pretty darn strong. I tell you what. Taking this fight. How however, one attack Dragoons versus what is it? 3-2? Even with high ground, it seems like it's not going to work out. Oh my goodness. Everything just dies. The tanks are brought down to assist. A little bit of mining remains for Rich, but not much. Six interceptors on the way at a time. A full 40 supply down. And I don't think there's much hope left for Rich. Rich is sending two Templar over to this high ground what is he planning to protect it's not clear a lot of goliaths holding the high ground all the mining is coming from the middle now he's throwing storms down on empty drop ships not sure what's going on with that damn these storms could be so helpful if they were uh, accompanying these carriers but he can't afford to even build a shuttle at this point. He's breaking the bank, trying to buy one observer. And now going to be losing carriers. There it is. GG is called. Damn, it's nice to see a Terran player win uh, against a Protoss going carriers. I'm glad it was Sharp who was the one to give it to us. So many. Oh my gosh. So many Templars coming out. He made one last round of Templar and then left the game. 
Dude, the number of storms that Rich had in this game is insane. If only he could have brought his Templar to bear at some of those critical junctures. It's so hard to fight Carrier Templar with Goliath tank. As long as you mix in a few Zealots to tank shots, it's really incredibly difficult to at the same time micro your Dragoons and try to target Templar with your tanks. When the Templar can just walk in range and throw down storms on all of your Goliaths, it is insanely tough. Insanely tough, but Sharp managed to make it work with double drops flying around the map, picking off bases, taking the middle actually turned out to be a huge move. The fact that there are mineral patches in the middle might have been what tipped the scales in Sharp's favor. As funny as that seems, because this base in the middle, it can't really be assaulted easily by the cares. Like if Sharp takes this base, easy attack. Get right on top of that base with the carriers. If you try to take this base down here, it, as if the carriers get on the high ground, you can't run up this ramp with Goliaths easily. Uh, this base was taken, but again, carriers got down here. Uh, this base from the high ground is hard to defend if the carriers are up here. You can't really take this one. This is not viable. This is so far away. It's And it was also taken by Rich. So the fact that the middle of the map, these eight mineral patches changed the game is kind of crazy. It's pretty ridiculous. But it's a credit to the map makers for having this beautiful little four patch. I've never seen eight patches or two clumps of four in the middle of the map before. Coming in clutch. Absolutely crazy. I love to see it, guys. I'm so excited for watching Sharp. I'm going to be going to the SSL round of four this week. Or excuse me, next week. I'll be there on the 21st. See if you can spot me in the crowd if you're watching the live stream or one of the casts later on. Thank you everybody for watching. I probably won't release a video on the 21st or the 22nd. Uh, because pretty much everyone's going to be tuning into the SSL anyway and I'll be a bit busy. I'm not going to take my laptop with me to Korea. Just a, just a small bag with a few clothes. I don't have a check on check check in bag or anything like that. So going to be traveling light. Once again, thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.